Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about your Ancestry.com homepage. That may not seem very exciting to some of you, but there are some really neat tools that are available on your homepage if you just know where to find them, what they're used for, and how to get them where you need them. So we're going to talk specifically today about quick links and then some of my other favorite tools on the homepage. Let's dive right in. The first thing you need to know is that on the top right hand side of your home page on Ancestry.com and the home page is just when you type Ancestry.com into your web browser it's where you go. Okay, um, It's also if you were anywhere on Ancestry and you click the home button it's where you go. So on the top right hand side of that page um, below the header and I'll show you here in just a minute there is a customize your home page link. When you click on that, it allows you to um, have a whole, there's a whole list of options. We'll go over these here, but there's a whole list of options. And then you have the option one at a time to add those to your homepage. So whatever tools you think will be most valuable for you in your research. And then you can position them um, either on the right hand or the left hand side of your page. You can move them up and down so that, that it's exactly how you want it. Now some people may not care about this, but um, I'm very picky about how I like things set up. And so I've played with it quite a bit and sometimes some things are more important to me than others and so I'll add or remove things occasionally. So let's just go straight to the website and that's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time today. Um, I'll make my screen a little bit bigger so you can see it, but I would encourage you if you're if um, if you're viewing this in a small viewing window, go ahead. If you're watching this live on live stream, hover over the center of the video viewing window, and you should have a full screen option. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, the full screen option is going to be um, on on the right hand side underneath the video. So you make it full screen so that you can see what we're doing here. So this is my Ancestry.com homepage, believe it or not. <laughs> you can see here a giant message that says everything has been removed from your page. I just wanted to start with a clean slate. So pretty much the only thing on here is this message here, which is always a little amusing to me. It's like those messages in those pages in the books that say this page left intentionally blank. Um, you're going to have an ad and this this is the only kind of ads you should ever see on Ancestry.com um, are these little one-click ads here from us or sometimes we'll have what we call a banner ad. It'll be across the top here. If you have any other kind of pop-up ads, those are usually going to be malware or some kind of a computer virus. So you're going to want to get that checked out right away. We do not have any kind of um, pop-up ads for other services on our website. We only advertise things that are related to, specifically to Ancestry.com and to our other companies and services. So this is what a blank homepage looks like. I'm going to click customize my homepage and you'll see here on the left hand side I have a whole list of things I can add to my homepage. So of course one of the first things I'm going to want to add to my homepage is the search box. So I click, I, I highlighted it and then I clicked add to home page and now here it is right here. Okay. Some of you may want to add your family tree to your home page. I don't particularly like that because I have a whole bunch of family trees and that way I can just select from a list. Um, if you're new to Ancestry.com, maybe you want to have this getting started um, feature here or if you've, um, you know, if you just want some quick reviews about some tips and tricks about how to make it work. There is also the recent member connect activity widget. These are all called widgets. That's such a funny word to me. Um, we have this recent member connect activity widget. So if you want your uh, member connect activity right on your homepage, you can do that. If you don't, you can always find it just right here. It's the top option under collaborate. So I don't put that on my homepage. Um, but you can. There is a thing here called My Quick Links. Uh, I'm going to add that to my homepage. We'll talk about that in just a minute and what it is and how to do it. Um, there is a What's Happening at Ancestry.com box. I always have that one on my homepage for a couple of reasons. One, it provides me with a running list of the most recent databases as they're added to Ancestry.com. 
Um, and the other reason is because that box right there has quick links to all of our social media sites. So if I needed to just hop over to uh, the Ancestry.com YouTube channel and take a look at what was going on or what videos had been uploaded, if I wanted to jump over to the Ancestry.com Facebook page um, or the Twitter account or whatever, all of that is right there on the bottom of that what's happening at Ancestry.com widget. So I like to have that on my homepage. We have a to-do list, okay? I like to have that on my homepage, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here in just a moment. You can also have your recent activity, which is a really interesting thing um, available. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Your shoe box, if you didn't know where to find your shoe box and you'd saved records to it, you can have that on your homepage. Uh, we also have specific record collections. Mostly what this is, is it allows you to go directly to a particular census year. So you can just click on it and search that specific census. Um, I prefer to use the card catalog, so I'm not going to add that to my homepage. A couple of other things here. We have the Jewish name variation. Um, what that is, is it's a widget that allows you to plug in a name and then select a country where that person was from, and it will tell you all the variations, the ways that they Americanized their names, poss possible Yiddish names that were similar to that, or if the person was from Russia, for example, and they were named Rachel here in the United States, you could see all of the variations of that of the Russian version of that name. It's a really handy little tool if you're doing um, Eastern European research in particular. Same with this Jewish community locator. It allows you to put in the name of a small town or village, in um, in Eastern Europe, almost um, mostly, I think there's some German and um, some other places included there, but it allows you to put in the name of a small town or village and it will tell you exactly um, where, where, what countries that location was in over time. It will also map it to where it exists currently on a map and then all of the different names for that location. You know, just like people, sometimes locations have different names. And so this allows you to, to just look at some of those variations. Even though it's titled the Jewish Community Locator, I have found it, <coughs> excuse me, I have found it very useful for um, Eastern European research in general. I'm not gonna add that to my homepage right now, but just so you're aware that it exists. These last two things here I am going to add to my homepage. One is the Ancestry.com blog, and then one is message board favorites, and we'll talk about both of those here. Now, once you've gone through each of these things and added everything to your homepage, now scroll down just a little bit here. You can see that on the top of each one of these boxes, you have the option to move it up or down. So I like to put things in a specific order um, based on how frequently I use them. So I'm gonna move my message boards down I'm gonna move my shoe box way down because I use it um, probably the least of all of these things. I'm gonna move search up to the very top because it's the one that I use the very most. Moving that up. So search is now at the top. I'm gonna to move what's happening up a click here. So on the left-hand side of my page now it goes search, what's happening, message board favorites, and my shoe box. That's the order I want those in. Now for the ones on the right hand side here, I've got the Ancestry blog, that's where I want that. The next thing I want to see is my quick links. So I'm gonna move that up so that it's right beneath the blog, okay? And then I want my to-do list to be next. So the blog, my quick links, my to-do list, and then my recent activity. So now those are all in the order that I want them. And that's something that you're gonna to wanna to do. Just make sure that everything's where you want it on your page. Um, you do not have the option to switch things between left and right. As you may have noticed, <laughs> um, some of these little widgets are skinny and some of them are fat. And all of the fat widgets or the wide widgets go on the left-hand side and all of the um, more narrow and smaller widgets go over here on the right hand side. So you can't switch them be between left and right, but you can move them up and down. Once you get the things added that you want to have added to your page, and you get them positioned where you want, and if you've added something you don't want, you just click on this little trash can and it will just remove it from your homepage and put it back into this list. Then you go ahead and click exit, 
and that saves your home page the way that you want to view it. Okay, so then let's just talk for a few minutes about what some of these widgets are and how I use them. Maybe that will spark some ideas um, for you. You don't have to use them exactly the same way I do. You can get a little creative, whatever works for you. But here just how I use these things. So I've put my search box at the top. Um, you may notice um, it, I use the advanced form of the search box. That gives me control of every single field that I search on as opposed to using the um, simple form of the search form, you'll notice I have no control. I just put in information and Ancestry returns um, a ranked, ranked search results based on every piece of information I entered. So I always have my advanced form showing. The Ancestry.com blog, of course, um, I'm amazed that there's still a lot of people that don't know about it and I guess it's just because I, I always have this widget somewhere on my page and so I pay attention to it. You can just see what some of the latest blog posts are um, that have come from, from myself or the other product, man other product managers or other people in the company. Scroll down just a little bit. Let's talk about quick links. So quick links are any place in Ancestry.com, you can see how some of these have a little our little leaf logo, or any place outside of Ancestry.com where I can go just with one click here and I can go directly to, for example, I can go directly to Cindy's list. If you're not familiar with that, she has basically indexed um, all genealogical websites on the whole internet just about um, and created a website, free website that we can use to see where genealogy records exist online. So I've created a quick link to Cindy's list so that I have um, so that I have access to that. Oh, I just refreshed my page and I think I lost that. There we go. Okay. A little cache issue there. So, uh, so I can have links to places outside of Ancestry.com or I can have links to places inside of Ancestry.com. So for example, this Arkansas marriages database I use a lot. I am always searching for records uh, in Arkansas. And so I have just taken this database and I have made a quick link out of it. Um, Pennsylvania church records, the 1940 census. Um, I even made a quick link to my shoe box. Now that it's on my homepage, I probably don't need that anymore. So if I hover over that, I can just delete that particular quick link. Now, here's how you add a quick link, okay? I'm gonna, for example, um, there is actually a database that I am interested in. So I'm gonna go to the card catalog, and it is this US City Directories database, okay? So I just, I went into the card catalog, I found the database I was interested in, and I clicked on it. And so now here I am in the US City Directories database. I'm going to copy, so highlight and oh, highlight and copy that URL in my address bar on my web browser. Then I'm going to come back over here and where it says, under my quick links, it says add a link. And now down here, it gives me the option to add a new quick link. So then I'm going to, oh, I'm going to paste that URL that I just copied into there, and then I'm going to give, that, give it a name that I will recognize, so US City Directories, and I'm going to click Save. And now I have a new quick link to that particular or that very specific database on Ancestry.com. So you can do that with any website, uh, any any website or any database internal, anything internal to Ancestry.com or anything external to Ancestry.com. You can just create a link directly to that place on the web or directly to that database on Ancestry.com, okay? So that's how I use my quick links. Things that I use the most often that I wanna be able to just, when I come to Ancestry, click on it once and get straight where I wanna go. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about briefly is the to-do list. Um, for me, I just use it mostly as a, almost like a bookmarking system uh, for where I was. When, I get, when my research gets interrupted, and I know that never happens to any of you, <laughs> um, but my research, when, it, when I get interrupted and I need to remember where I was or what I was doing, I'll just come here and I'll click add an item, and it allows me to say, you know, to just type something here, right? Um, you know, I was looking for the, you know, 
looking for John Smith in the 1930 census. And I can just make a note to myself so that when I come back to my research, I know exactly what I was doing. So you can see here I have a few items. Um, find a marriage record for Laura Adeline Harrington. So I'd, I got interrupted at some point when I was l working on her and her family and had not yet found a marriage record. Um, I am in the process of doing an, an image by image browse through the 1940 census. So just clicking page after page after page through the 1940 census for this town. I got to image 23 and the reason is because because I'm related to like two thirds of the town. <laughs> and so it was just as easy for me to just go page by page and and extract the information off of that census for everybody there's also a book that I found uh, that was written oh probably I think in the 1920s uh, maybe a little bit maybe it was updated a little bit later but there's this book I found that is about one of my immigrant ancestors from a couple several hundred years ago and all of the descendants that they had identified to that point. And so I'm reviewing that book. Um, it has some good sources in it so that I can add some of that um, source information into my tree so that I know where to go to look to view some of those original records to verify my research, to verify their research, um, and to continue to build my family tree. So, so just a couple of different projects that I'm working on in this case, and then a specific person that I was interrupted when I was working on information about her. So that's how I use my to-do list, just as for myself, just a reminder about what I wanna do next. It's also good because all three of these, for me anyway, all three of these are on three different lines of my family. And I don't know about you, but sometimes as much as I love Carroll County, Arkansas, sometimes when I get interrupted or so, I'm, I'm a little bit grateful <laughs> because I've become so entrenched in those people and in their lives that I just need to, you know, maybe go to New Jersey for a little while or, you know, up to Pennsylvania or wherever. Like sometimes it's just a, a, a refreshing thing to focus on a different branch of the family for a little while. And so this just gives me options when I sit down to do my research, you know, what do I feel like working on today? So that's how I use that to-do list. Now, this recent activity widget, it is, um, actually, you can find this on your, on your search page, but I like it here just because it gives me a quick glance um, at things that I was looking at last. So for example, these are three searches I did this morning. I was looking uh, in US passport applications, um, I was looking actually just for an, a specific image. I was looking for an Edward Jones in the Gretna Green Scotland marriage registers and a Henry Jones in the Gretna Green Scotland marriage registers. So these are the last three searches that I did specifically or the last three databases I was looking at. And then below that are the very specific searches that I did last. Now I can click on see more and that will take me to a page that shows me, I think it's like my last hundred searches like the very specific searches that I did the last hundred times I was looking through records. And I could click on any one of those and it would take me to the search results that I just, that I um, created when I did that specific search. So you can see here, these are the, the, the couple of searches I did this morning. Here are a bunch from yesterday. For example, I was looking for a Catherine Madison in this specific database. Or if I scroll down here just a little bit, um, I did a, if it says all categories, that means I was doing a global search or searching all 11 billion records on Ancestry.com. And if I click on that, it will take me to the exact search I did, right? Here's all the information that I had filled in that I did when I did that search. Here are my search results, so I don't have to type all this information in again. I can just click on that, go straight back to my search results, and pick up where I left off. I love the way that that works. I think it's fantastic. Again, that is, um, I got there by having this recent searches or recent activity widget here on my homepage. I can look at the last databases I looked at. I can look at the last searches I did, or I can also look at the last few of my Canvas projects that I worked on. Okay, last uh, widget that we're gonna talk about today is the message board favorites. So hopefully you're using message boards. Let me just scroll up here. Uh, message boards are found under the Collaborate tab. You can come down here and click on Message Boards and it will take you to a, a search function. Message boards are arranged by surname or by location. Most Those are the most of our, the majority of our databases are fall into those two categories, location 
or surname. And so I can do a search here for that, or I can browse, you know, the location browse, for example. Let me make that a little bigger. The location browse, for example, goes United States, and then you pick a state, and then you pick a county, um, and then you see what information is being talked about. The surname browse, um, you just use these letters here to browse to see what surnames, or just type the surname in to search for it. There are also categories, so there are um, people talking about different kinds of research, lots and lots of help available here. I mean, the message boards are just fantastic, and they're free. You don't have to have a subscription on Ancestry.com to read or to post to message boards. So when I find a message board that I'm interested in, one of the things that I can do over here is, and it, this is a terrible example. One of the things I can do over here is I can add this board to my favorites. Now this particular one I'm looking at is already on my favorite list, so that's why it says remove. Um, so if it's a board I've never looked at, I can just click over here to add it to my favorites. And so what you can see here is that I have uh, one, two, three, four surname boards on my favorites list and two counties, Carroll County, Arkansas, and Hawkins County, Tennessee. So I've got these five, six boards here that I am following, which just means I've marked them as favorites and I wanna keep track of what people are talking about. I pay attention so that I can see if one of my Lippincotts or one of my Shipmans or one of my Joneses in Hawkins County or whatever, if, if something comes up on the message boards that I'm interested in, uh, then I can go read it or respond. You can see here these boards get a lot of activity. Um, this top board here, for example, 491 posts. The last post was made, it looks like last week. The Hawkins County board, 12,000 posts. So lots of, lots of activity. So on my home page, what this looks like here, scroll back down here. Here are my message board favorites, and here are the six boards. And you can see here, I can just click on them and it will change what I'm looking at. So if I'm looking at the Hawkins County, Tennessee board, I can look here and I can see they're talking about a Davis and a Morris family. They're talking about a Jenkins family. Neither of those are families that I'm interested in, so I probably won't click through to those messages. I can do the same for the Carroll County board. They're talking about a Carroll County, Arkansas, Arkansas school census that's now online. That's something I'm probably going to be interested in. They're talking here about Jane Johnson Fancher Clark. That's a name I recognize. So I'm going to look at that message and maybe go check out my tree and see what's going on. So that's how I use the message boards. Um, I try not to make this list terribly long um, because I don't want to get overwhelmed. So I, for my own sanity, have just kept it as narrow as possible. Just a few surnames, just a couple of locations. Um, I can still always search the full message boards, but these are the ones that I just want to follow for now and just kind of keep on my homepage so that they're, they're top of my mind. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, again, you're going to want to customize your homepage. Just play around with some of those widgets, see what they do, see what they can do for you. When you find one you like, you can add it to your homepage. You can move them up and down on the page, or you can remove them from the page. Those are your options. Um, but I hope you'll take some time to explore them. And if you find some cool new thing to do with one of those widgets, I would love to hear about it. You can always email me at ask at ancestry.com. I do read all of those emails. Um, I get hundreds of them a day, so I can't respond to all of them. But I do read them all, and they help me craft these, these shows for you. They help me write blog posts to educate you and others who I'm very certain have similar questions um, they also give us ideas for ways in which you're using the website so that um, maybe we can share that with other people, give them further ideas about how to do their own family history research. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.